What's going on folks? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. Welcome back to the party. Today we're going to be creating the very first Myth of Empires guide on the channel and I wanted to talk about how you go about leveling up your attributes, why it matters, but most importantly your proficiency skills. Now the very first thing that you need to know about Myth of Empires is that there's an attribute system in place. You have strength, physique, agility, command, or sorry, charisma, and you have wisdom. Now anytime that you level up your skills that are underneath these specific attributes like for example strength comes from one-handed shield two-handed pole arm and heavy armor you will increase the total amount of that attribute you have which goes up to a total of 100. now what this means is that you'll want to make sure you're leveling up all the attributes as best you can what i like to do like what i did for agility for example because you have to uncap these skills each time they reach a certain milestone which costs copper is i went to about 600 bow when i first started playing the game stopped there and then went to 450 and everything else so that was riding projectile crossbow light armor uncapped the bow got it to 750 did the same thing with the other ones got them all to 600 and then push the rest of the way to 900 bow. Doing this since the game started allowed me to accumulate 84 agility, although I have been slacking on it the past couple of days. Then it goes towards increasing my overall range damage, which is basically a requirement whenever you're doing any kind of archery, crossbowing, or using throwing weapons. For strength, it's the same thing. It will increase your character's melee damage. For charisma, this one will increase your character's, or sorry, your warrior's damage, your max HP for your warriors, and your damage resistance for them as well. And then for Wisdom, it increases your Siege Weapon damage, and for Physique, it'll increase your maximum HP and your damage resistance. I'm sure most of you have already heard about how you can go about leveling all these skills, but I feel like I'm comfortable enough with the game now to relay everything that I've learned over the past couple of weeks, well, month and a half really, or two months, and it might be enough detail to help people, both new and old players, or at the very least teach you a new way of doing these types of trainings. So for the first array of skills being under strength, each one of these is all pretty straightforward. There are multiple ways you can train them, but the most effective ways or one of the most effective ways that I've learned is to set up NPC farms. Now what this is, is you essentially can build a building or if you have a cave, you can kind of just block the cave off and do it that way. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to set up a prison. And I believe you need to make sure that the prison's doorway is facing towards you. When you're placing it, I'll show the orientation of it on screen. And then on the left side of the prison, you'll want to either put two campfires there so that the NPCs will get stuck between them. We'll get into that in a second. Or you can just put two half walls like I have here in this most recent design. Either way is fine and you'll want to put the chest on there if you do it this way so you can step up on there to hit them. I find that the campfire method is way easier but whatever personal preference you have is totally fine. Now how you're going to get these NPCs into this prison and into this NPC farm is you're going to go out and take a club. Any kind of club will do but the higher the better. You're going to take a piece of crude hay. It's going to look like black hay, very cheap on the marketplace. You're going to also take a weapon, of course. You're going to have a horse to make this easier, a prison that you'll have to craft because I don't think you can purchase them from the market, and then you'll need either a wagon or a cart. Now, the reason, first of all, that you'll want a wagon and a horse or a cart is in a prison is because you will have an easier time getting them back to base or that building without them having to wake up constantly. If they're tied up in a prison, they can't wake up and break out of it per se until you let them out. So it's the way more effective method to use. It might be a little bit more expensive if you manage to get caught out in the open world and ganked, but it's overall going to save you a massive headache of having to knock these enemies out over and over each time. Now what you want to look for specifically is the gold borders and the dragon borders. Also, where it gets a little complex, you want to make sure that whichever NPCs you're getting, they're from the same faction. I'll get into this in just a second, but for example, if you only see robbers around the NPC camps that you're near, you'll want to get all robbers, pirates, all pirates. Now you can have two separate um, boxes that are kind of a good distance away from each other. And the reason we're talking about this at all is the aggro system. But let me go ahead and move forward really quick. So once you get to a camp and you find a gold or dragon border, you can knock them out using your weapon first. So you get them down to about 10% health. Then you use the club to knock them out. Make sure you don't do an extra attack and make sure you don't have continuous attacks on because if you accidentally hit them again when you knock them out, you're probably going to kill them. Now, fun fact, you can also use bronze bolted crossbow bolts if you're a crossbow user or a, a stone blunted arrows. Uh, I think you can also make higher tiered arrows as well that are blunted and they can actually be super effective if your aim is pretty good. So that might be something to look into as well. Once you knock them out, take the weapons off. You can leave their armor on, that's totally fine. Put the crude piece of hay in their inventory just so you don't forget. And then go ahead and give them a treasure pill or one of those crude healing potions that you can make from the start of the game. 
What you're going to do next is start dumping these NPCs into the NPC farm, whichever design you chose, doesn't matter. And then once they're all there, you got to make sure that you get out of their sight or more than likely they'll already be healed up by then. But you make sure that they de-aggro by walking away. Now, the reason that you want to have them all be in the same faction is because NPCs can fight each other. And if a robber and a pirate are right next to each other, they're going to stay aggroed onto each other and then they won't heal up so that you can train on them. So make sure you either have two pits set up if you have multiple factions around you. So that way you can rotate between them. They need to be at least like, I would say, 15, 20 feet away with the door in between, hopefully, so that they can't see each other and aggro onto each other. And then after that, you can go ahead and start training on them. Also, fun fact, I think possibly in one of the recent, most recent updates, or maybe this was always a thing and I didn't notice, the NPCs have something called humiliation because when you knock them out, the primary intention behind that is to put them on a torture rack or something like that so you can start taming them. However, if you keep hitting them over a certain amount of time, the humiliation will go all the way up and they'll die from it. Now, it seems that just by leaving them in one of these NPC farms, over time, their humiliation goes up anyway. So like every two to three days-ish, when you want to use these NPC farms, you're probably going to have to keep refilling them. And then if you want to take this a step further, you can also put heavy armor on them. Their default armor is still fine. That's totally fine. But I've actually started to, whenever I capture these NPCs and set them up in NPC farms, I'll put black iron armor on them because it will make them take a lot less damage. And therefore you can train on them a whole lot longer throughout the entire night, really, if you wanted to. And then on top of that, the treasure pill that you gave them all you have to give them is one and it will continually be used when it's off cooldown because anything you put in your in the npc's inventory like if you notice when you capture them they'll only ever have one ammo for their bow or crossbow so same thing for the treasure pill all they need is one and then it will last forever basically on top of that you want to be using if possible the musical instruments from one of the dlcs the reason for this is because although they are a little bit more expensive to make than the regular wooden weapons you do far less damage with them the npc can last longer before you have to stop training on it and let it regenerate a whole lot of benefits there you do need to buy the dlc just to be able to use it so even if you have somebody else in your guild that can make them you still need the dlc to use it but worst case scenario if you can't just go ahead and get a wooden weapon or a stone weapon and you can use that anyway you can use the stone hammers for one-handed wooden rakes for pole arms you can use the stone hose for two-handed and alongside using regular basic shields which we'll get into how best to train that in a second you can actually put crude reins in your hand and shield bash enemies and it'll work just as fine now where we get to the nitty gritty of training heavy armor and shield, here's two things you can do. Now normally people will suggest that you set up fox pens. What does this mean? It basically means you go find a fox pond out in the world and then you basically you build a building near it and then you can open up one of the walls, go lure a bunch of foxes inside and then close it behind them and then boom you got yourself a fox pen. Anytime you want to train up your shield and heavy armor you can go over hit the foxes that are trapped inside they will all start swarming you probably like eight to ten of them and then if you have heavy armor it will constantly train up your heavy armor by the way you want to be uh, crouching when you do this so they can hit you in the legs and the chest so that you get more training xp if they are only hitting your boots it may not give you as much experience and then i've also heard that sitting on top of a campfire can make it more efficient somehow but i'm not 100 sure on how this part works you can do the same thing with the shield have them bash on you you can also do the same thing with light armor to train up that skill if all the fox ponds are taken up you can also go find a crab spot that works too or you can use the second method which is to use the npcs now what you can do here is you can you can knock the npcs out and put them in a room um, i was thinking of doing this with like a half wall in a room so they can't get out but i can come in anytime i want they'll all be put together you equip throwing rocks to them they're going to continually throw rocks against your shield or throw rocks against your heavy armor and when you're on a power hour which is basically going to your guild boundary and then activating the warrior proficiency blessing you are going to get a lot of experience for it very very quickly also while all the npcs are in place if you want to train up your shield you can go right up to them in between the campfires or what have you and then just start shield bashing them with the reins or the shield with the reins i don't believe it loses durability but it will still give you shield skill and it can also be an effective way to train your shield except it's going to take a lot longer because there's a cooldown on shield bash and it may just be easier for you to go ahead and do the fox method or the rock throwing method so keep that in mind as well and the last thing is you can actually get npcs i don't remember if they stack or not but they may you can buy npcs on the market that have uh traits on them that give you bonuses to your skill accumulation 
Now, I believe when it comes to our skills, there is extraordinary strength and perfection. Extraordinary strength is for the strength-based skills. Perfection is for agility. I know the extraordinary wisdom is like for your crafting speed of your NPC. And then I think there could be one for charisma, but don't quote me on that. The next set of skills I want to talk about training are the agility skills. For this one, you've got projectile, bow, crossbow, riding, and light armor. Light armor, we can go ahead and knock out right out of the gate. We've already talked about this and how you can do the foxes, the crabs, or just the NPCs with throwing rocks. For the first three range-based skills, projectile, bow, and crossbow, the best way that I've seen so far is to just use a training dummy. You'll be able to unlock it, unlock the ability to craft it pretty early on. And then anytime that you are on a power hour, you'll put a NPC with perfection right next to you and then make sure to keep him out. I don't believe it applies if he's working on something like on a station. Keep him out, let him be near you, and then continually throw or shoot at the training dummy itself. I've been told before, I haven't fully tested this yet, but if you aim for the shield, apparently that gives you more of the ammunition back because the cool thing about training on a training dummy versus anything else is like the old method for training up bow, projectile, and crossbow was just shoot in the air, uh, which would still give you skill, but a training dummy will actually give you some of your ammunition back. You can get it by accessing the training dummy's inventory, so it's the far better way to go. And then anytime that you're sleeping, anything like that, I would especially suggest this for people wanting to level up any agility based skills. Just log out to the main menu, but keep your computer on and make sure your idle proficiency training is going at all times to make sure you can accumulate a bunch of it up to use for the next day. For the riding skill, it's just basically riding around naturally as far as I've seen. Initially, I thought turning in a complete circle would work, but it seems like you need to move forward to some degree. But if you have five expertise points in the riding skill, which you should be doing anyway anytime you're trying to level a skill up, then as long as you remember to ride everywhere, it's not really going to matter that much and also idle proficiency helps too, it's going to get up there pretty quick. Skipping over light armor, which we've already gone over, into the physique skills. Physique itself is something that's going to level up very quickly while you're training heavy and light armor. It's just by carrying heavy goods, conducting stamina cost actions, or planting, hunting, lumbering, or mining. So if you feel like it while you're training archery, crossbow, projectile, you can jump at the same time to train it. You can also over encumber yourself while you have people throwing rocks at you. For example, in the room that you go into where the NPCs will throw rocks at you, put a bunch of rocks on a bag in there and then when you go in there like each time you die and you respawn to go back in there to grab your stuff and put your armor back on you can also over encumber yourself and that might level it up a little bit faster at the same time or you might need to be moving for that too like carrying heavy goods while moving so it's worth a little bit of testing but overall your physique level is likely going to reach 900 far before your light armor and heavy armor do. And then for mining, lumbering, and planting, I haven't really seen any like surefire way to get this aside from just doing the action on power hour. Maybe if you placed yourself on one of the placeable gravel pits or one of the placeable lumbering camps, you could likely gain experience off of that if it lets you. I'm not actually sure because I've only ever put NPCs on it. But other than that, your main way is probably just going to be idle proficiency training, making sure you have five expertise points on those skills, and then just doing the action whenever you can. The farming one's a little bit easier to work with because all you really have to do is, let's say your guild lives next to one of the NPC fields findable out in the world, or you have plots of farmland inside wherever you base at, all you really have to do is keep on smacking your hoe down on the soil of the planter and what this does is it increases the prosperity of the soil and the rate of it ticks down fast enough to where if even if you got it to 100 percent every couple of seconds or so it should tick down again so you'll still be getting proficiency all throughout the night if you had like a macro setup or something or wanted to pull a real game remove and put a weight down on your keyboard or something like that for the hunting skill i would say same thing doing the action itself on power hour and making sure that you have five expertise points is probably going to be the best way. However, there is a way for you to get hunting and taming experience while you're AFK, and that's to use the fish ponds that can be built at end game at level 60. Now, if somebody in your guild has built the fish pond and you want to level up hunting and taming, all you have to do is go to the fish pond, hold the interaction button over it, and then select the option to use. I think you actually have to have fish in it for this to even pop up. But once you have all that set up and ready to go, you can just use the fishing pond to gain hunting and taming XP while you're sleeping, for example. Another thing you can do for hunting is you can go out into the world when you're on your power hour, find yourself a wolf den or an elephant spawn, bring a bunch of stone knives. Make sure they are not iron or bronze. And the reason for this is because once you kill the animal, and also make sure you don't have the gathering buffs on because the stone knife has such a low yield 
that it will get you more hits out of it. Meaning that if you were to skin an animal with an iron knife versus a stone knife, the iron knife would probably only take about mm, six to 10 hits to get it. Whereas the stone knife would take double the amount of hits and it would give you more hunting experience as a result. For the intelligence skills, I would say these ones are going to be the most amount of trial and error and are probably the ones that I'm the least knowledgeable about when it comes to ways you can level them up. But for the crafting skill to start out with, basically same thing as the other ones. Make sure you have five expertise points in it. Idle proficiency helps. And then what you can do for this one is you can have yourself sit on a furnace that's cooking a lot of copper, iron, stuff like that throughout the night. And I'll get to why you want to start there in a second. And then you can also have your guildies or friends queue stuff up on the furnace while you're gone. Same thing for other crafting benches because they can open the menu up and you don't actually have to be there. All they have to do is start queuing up the crafting or the refinement and then your character is going to do it automatically. Make sure you also have warrior food in there at all times. And then the reason that I would start at iron and copper is because I've heard, I'm not sure if this is true, but I've heard that there is an expertise mechanic when it comes to crafting where if your crafting skill or your player level, I think it's your crafting skill, is far below what you're crafting. So let's say someone queues up meteoric ingots for you while you're a lower level, then the amount of experience as a player that you get, that's right, it's player level, not, not crafting XP, is going to take a hit because you're not at the proper expertise level for it. Now for leveling up the crafting skill, this might work. Again, this will take some trial and error, but if you notice that you're not gaining a whole lot of crafting experience while you have five expertise points on it, idle proficiency, and somebody queues up meteoric ingots, that's probably the reason why. And I would wait until at least past 450 to try that. For the siege skill, you'll want to do all of the above. And then early on, you'll want to be on a construction bench instead crafting wagons. That's my recommendation because that does give you a decent chunk of siege skill. You can also set up a mobile flamethrower or a flamethrower in general and then repeatedly shoot it with the ammunition it uses, which is grease. And then every time you're reloading the grease, it gives you siege experience and quite a lot of it. So you can pop a power hour and that's going to be one of the most efficient ways that you can use it to level up siege. Another thing you can do, although it's probably the most tedious way of doing it, you can have somebody leave your guild or just do this on the enemy and then have that person craft a bunch of siege towers, walls, or just go take a bunch of battering rams and then start doing this on the enemy and just start breaking that stuff down. If they have high level building, even better. But those are three ways that you can definitely train that siege skill up and hopefully get up to 900 within a couple of weeks. And for leveling the building skill, I would just recommend going to either a kiln or a carpenter's bench, having someone queue up mixed brick for you or queuing up mixed brick yourself or crafting on the carpenter's bench, the jointed components or the slabs. And same deal here, somebody can queue up something for you if you can't craft it yourself. And actually, yeah, just a quick correction. I think it was, as far as the expertise part goes, I think it's mostly referring to the player level, like leveling that part up. So if you're leveling crafting, then I think it's fine to have somebody craft up a much higher level thing for you to craft than normal. Armorer, I'm gonna say the same deal, five extra tease points, idle proficiency training, and then just stay on a bench all day. Honestly, if you're somebody who is the weapon or armor crafter for your guild, your time is mostly going to be spent, spent on a bench anyway, so you're pretty much just going to get it by doing your job. But eventually, when you start getting the NPCs with perks on them, like Armor Master and Forging Master, you're going to be replaced as a crafter, so I wouldn't get too attached to these skills if I were you. For medicine, it's all of the above, except there's multiple different ways you can level medicine up. You can have your character sit on a mortar and pedestal and grind bone meal all night. You could go to one of the stone mills and make up some compost, refine some of the wheat and crops and stuff like that that your farmers get. You can also go to the cooking station and medicine cauldron since cooking and medicine actually share the same skill. And you can be cooking constantly or making as much medicine as you can for your guild and that should level up just fine. And then last but not least, we have the charisma skills starting her off with command. The cool thing about command is this is one you can actually level up while you're leveling up your warrior and agility proficient skills. All that needs to happen for you to start gaining command levels is for your warriors to hit other enemy hostiles in battle. So what you can do, this is what I usually do for leveling command, is you can take one dragon border, preferably a dragon border, you can also do this with a gold border, and then put them in a room either next to your NPC farm where you train your skills, or over by himself in a separate one that's still close by, have one of your NPCs in there with the stone hammer, or I don't think you can put musical instruments on it, but if you can, you can definitely do that too, or a stone hose, something like that, and then repeatedly have your NPC beat on that character while you're training your own skills, and then just make sure your NPC doesn't kill him. You can put him on passive before that enemy dies, and then have your NPC go out of range so he can de-aggro him, or if you want to, you can re-knock that NPC out, put him in a cage, and start feeding him until 
until he gets back to full health. But honestly, I would just walk away until he de-aggros in. It should be fine. They heal very, very quickly. You can also put multiple NPCs in a room for your companion to beat on. And then once you get the ability to unlock multiple NPCs, you can have them all out hitting the same mob or multiples of them. Same thing will work too. For the drill skill, this one is very similar. Also, by the way, you want to make sure that you have five expertise points set up for it, and then idle proficiency helps a ton. Also, I know this is a weird part to interject with this, but but for anybody that doesn't understand it, the idle proficiency is like boosted, rested experience from MMORPGs. It basically gives you bonus experience and helps you to level up the skill faster when you have that. But you can also take that idle proficiency you've accumulated and convert it right over into the skill levels or experience by using gold, which is yes, the cash shop currency, in the skill menu. This doesn't give you any more skill proficiency, doesn't really do anything there. It just converts that idle proficiency training that you've already farmed and then puts it into the real skill without you having to wait to do so. Now for the drill skill itself, it should level up when your warriors gain experience. So you can also have them work on the training dummy, which is basically you equipping your NPC with the weapon you want them to level up like two-hander, bow, or one-hander or polearm. Have them be stationed on the training dummy and put food inside and then it'll tell you how long it'll last and they will continue continually train on the training dummy even if they don't have ammo for example in their training throwing or bow or crossbow and then you can also later on put them on the drill proficiency ground which will give you a ton of experience for drills and I think possibly it's because you have multiples on it at once. Highly recommend crafting the Wutu and giving that to them as their warrior food. You can't buy it directly from the market but you can buy sorghum flour and low quality wheat and then mix that up in a clay cooking bench to make the Wutu which is extremely effective for your warriors. To level up the recruitment skill, this one's pretty straightforward, but you just have to capture an NPC, put it on a torture rack of some kind, and then go ahead and stand on it while warrior food's inside, and then your character's already going to start recruiting them over time. Probably a good one to do, especially if you're about to go to sleep. This is one of those ones that can be done throughout the night automatically, so you can use that to your benefit. Next one is taming, which for this one, you should definitely have five expertise points in it at all times if you're planning on training it. And then you can go out and tame horses or the simpler way is you can at end game or towards end game, build some animal cages and then go find an elephant spawn or build some nearby. And then you can lead the elephants into it by aggroing them, like throwing a rock at them or something running in there. And then there's a little doorway you can escape out of, but they can't get to. And then you can close it behind them. What you want to do from there is use either the club like you knock out the NPCs or you can use the blunt arrows and crossbow bolts if you're a hunter or archer or rather. I would highly recommend doing this because they're way more effective and do more damage in a single blow. Also, you can buy the blunted bolts and arrows off of the guild shop if you have one for merit. And then I would get about six or seven elephants all at once in those cages. Also, make sure you're going to have enough copper to die and respawn at the neutral camp really quick to uncap it. Because then at least like one to three power hours, you're probably going to be getting close to 900. And then get a bunch by either buying directly or getting the mats for it. The specially made hay bales, you're going to need at least 1.5k to 2k per elephant. But if you're just planning on getting your taming to 900 and then you're going to dip, you probably won't need the full amount for each of them to get there. And you'll likely be able to split about 2,000, 3,000 specially made hay bales between all of them to get there. And the last skill is called Renown. For this one, you can get it by just achievement hunting. So go into the menu and take a look at what achievements you don't have and start trying to hunt them down. You can go into the battlefield. So that means county battles, prefecture battles, fortresses battles, and I believe jousting as well. So anytime the jousting is up, which luckily they do have timers that pop up on the screen whenever the event is active, you can join those. Uh, the county battle, if you have a guild or somebody in your alliance that's going to be doing one, you might as well jump in. Same thing with the prefecture. And then my recommendation is to make sure you have five expertise points before going in there to make sure you get the most amount of renown possible. Also, when you unlock the different perks at 450 and 525 for renown, you can start getting bonus experience from gaining achievements or going into battlefields. And then I've heard that there's personal banners you can equip to your character that are crafted at the tailoring bench that you can get some extra bonuses to your renown to from. So that might be worth looking into as well. But that's going to do it for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to learn something new from this. And if you have any tips of your own that I may have missed, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. Have a wonderful night or day, folks, and farewell.